Hey guys, here's just a reminder. Um, I do have other content other than wrestling. Um, this is my other channel, uh, as you can see. I I tried so many different names for for uh, for for this channel. Uh, start off as Green Party and Socials News, Green Party News, stuff of that nature, and that's why you see like Slack uh, Slack Network presents and other things like that. Uh, now it's basically just I, I'm trying to ex explanation in regards to this basically is um, I feel that I feel now Green Party uh, National Party is a is just as corrupt as the Democrats and Republicans. Uh, a lot more things are coming out in regards to Republicans that have been proven right, but I'm not a Republican and I'm not a Democrat. I am a socialist by policy, by, by socialist by policy, and it seems like majority of the socialist. Uh, Political party parties uh, in the United States are in some way connected with the DNC in some way, and I don't want to be involved in that. So, the only thing I can suggest to you, if you're an, an independent or anybody else, just my own opinion, I'm going to be doing it myself. I don't, I'm not. I'm not saying you should, but I'm not going to vote. Um. I I've never donated to uh to any political party in the first place. We never been I never been officially a part of any of any political party. Um. Anyway, my point being is, if you don't want the parties the two party system to dictate what you who and what you vote for, you either you either work to get open uh, open primaries in in your state uh, and uh, rank choice paper ballot uh, uh, voting, or don't vote. Period. Because I'm sorry, but the only time they come around wanting to do what you want them to do is when they need your vote, and they've done this for forty plus years. So. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I'm saying that if you want to change, consider it as far as the non-voting part and working on you know, open primaries and working on getting um, op uh, uh, ranked choice paper ballots because there's a difference between paper ballots and machine ballot and, and machine voting. Machine voting can be easily hacked, supposedly hacked, and easily manipulated, whereas in paper ballots, there's a paper trail. So. Anyway, that's why I do. That's why I got to say, as far as that part goes, otherwise, this, I'm trying to turn this channel into uh, talking monetary theory. So that's why you see majority of the stuff on here is about MMT. Um, anyway, so uh, please give give the, give this channel a try. If you like the content on there that I continuously put up there, then subscribe. Uh, if you want to donate, you can go you can go to PayPal.me slash uh, Couple leftists, couple GAP network, and uh, donate what you want as far as that part goes, or go to this website, uh, check out my content, uh, all into this content, um, and subscribe, share, like, and yeah. Anyway, Be right back. <laughs> Hey, how's it going there? Uh, just wanted to update you guys. Um, this is I'm I'm bringing this back as far as uh, if you want any part of any merchandise that I, that I've had in the past or not. Uh, don't, don't forget you can go up to you can go up here and order any of this. It's all premium as far as uh, quality. I have a, I have a, I had a mask somewhere around here, but I, I, I still have the, uh, I still have the, uh, the, what was it? Um, sweatshirt or sweat jacket. One of these. This is, I still have one of these. Um, anyway, so yeah, um, check it out if you want. Uh, I have uh, pillows apparently. And this is the pillows. Yeah, I got pillows. Uh, three, four different colors. Um, check that out. 
Uh, and uh, coming up next will be the my uh, my main show. Uh, stay tuned. Peace out. Hey, welcome to the show. Um, if you're new to this uh, channel, uh, thank you for uh, viewing or listening, depending on which uh, platform you're on. Um, but anyway, uh, please subscribe if you wish. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Um, anyway, so before we get to what you see, uh, and for the people listening, uh, I have uh, the rational between nominal and real wage growth. This is a paper that uh, was done by a Alex Damash and Lawrence H. Summers. Uh, I follow uh, uh, Larry Summers on Twitter, and he was boasting about, about this uh, uh, study or article that Alex Damash had, uh, had put up on the 10th. So I wanted to check it out and see if I can understand it and see if I can form any opinions about it. Um, I have, obviously, but I also uh, went to a counterpoint as far as the part goes. But first, I want to kind of um, talk a little bit about, uh, I think it was, a, it was a IFC or some of that. It's an uh, international finance uh, conference or some to that effect. Uh, a member there said that... Uh, that Russia had Russia's ruble has uh, has gone back to the point they had before the sanctions, but that was misleading, and that it was it was no longer uh, convertible. My answer to that is: it's a sovereign currency. It has very little outside debt. It controls its own currency. It could it could. Um, make more currency if it, if it needs to. Uh, so as long as another country is willing to take it in exchange for goods or services or both, then it's still convertible. Um, and actually, uh, one of both Russia and the United States' biggest uh, trading partners, China, uh, just made a deal with Russia to boost their trading. Uh, with each other. Um, then I read. I, I read on Twitter also. Like most of my news on Twitter, it seems like that Janet Yellen came out and basically threatened China. Problem is, the world is starting to see through our BS and and calling our bluff in regards to different portions, uh, different th things as far as uh, economies. Uh, product uh, imports and exports and stuff of that nature. From what I can see, the since one of the biggest uh, exports that uh, that Russia has, other than wheat and other things, is gas and oil, and that's one sector that has not been touched by, uh, as far as I know about anyway, uh, by sanctions. So they're still able to survive pretty well as well. I don't know about pretty well. I don't. I don't live there, obviously, but uh, they're able to sustain themselves. Um, also, from what I have looked at, uh, the prices of comparison. I mean, uh, their prices compared to say United States uh, prices are very different. Uh, their inflation is not very in comparison. Not at, not as inflationary as ours. Um, Maybe it's because they're the producers of the uh, of those uh, exports. It comes directly from them. I don't know, uh, but my my point being is, I don't see any part of this uh, ending anytime soon. And with, um, I think it's uh, Finland and and Sweden uh, entering NATO uh, during the summer. They're getting, NATO is getting closer and closer to Russia uh, in regards to borders. And I did read, uh, at least somewhat read the, I think it was the deal, uh, NATO deal with Russia back in the 90s, where it did say that they would not expand. 
uh, to as close to any of the Russian borders. They have uh, the past what 20, 30 freaking years. They they have expanded uh, NATO. So do I think that this is a is a setup for a direct war with Russia? I hope not, because that would just be stupid uh, on our part, on our government's part. Um, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Anyway, so this article right here looks at uh, the relation, a relation between nominal and real wages. Let me write it down here. Over the past year, as employers faced a severe labor shortage, in my opinion, first on that is mostly due to mandates, because a lot of people walked off the job because of mandates. A lot of a lot of transportation workers walked off the, because of the mandate. Uh, so if the mandate wasn't in place. Uh, I'm not saying that, that we wouldn't have a labor shortage. I, I'm saying that the labor shortage wouldn't be as massive as it is. Uh, and since struggle to fill record levels of job openings, workers in the, United, in the U.S. gained the significant leverage and won historically unprecedented pay raises, according to the best available wage data from the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta. Media, uh, median year-over-year -year wage growth in the U.S. reached a series high of 6.5% in February of this year. While it is tempting to think the higher average wages categorically make workers richer, we believe there is a reason for uncertainty. It is useful to consider the following football analogy made by Arthur Oaken to differentiate, uh, di differentiate, I guess, uh, differentiate, whatever, <laughs> between individual and aggregate outcomes. When an individual football fan stands up in the crowd, he can see the football game better. But if everyone in the crowd stands up, then nobody sees any better and everyone is made less comfortable and worse off. Similar to this logic, we believe there is a reason to question whether aggregate wage increases are always better for workers. Uh, we first highlight that in general, the correlation between economic wage, wide wage increases and worker uh, pur purchasing power is close to zero or negative. There's a table here if you're just listening. Uh, you know, it's only Excuse me. Uh, so you close, uh, table one shows a historic relationship between nominal wage growth and real wage growth going back to 1965. We show the correlation uh, coefficient uh, using alternating, uh, alternating excuse me, wage measures and inflation measures and include both the contemporaneous, contemporaneous, I guess, uh, correlation and the correlation between lag, lag the minimum wage and real wages. Across all our uh, series, um, the correlation between nominal wage growth and real wage growth is very low and usually becomes negative with lag. So here we have uh, the correlation coefficient between nominal and real wage growth of 65 to 2019. Wage measures, a CPI, uh, core PCE, CPI, core PCE, which is all the categories. Again, if you're listening, uh, average hourly earnings for production uh, slash non-supervisory employees uh, was a minus 0 0.17 in the CPI and the core PCE 0.03 and CPI 0. Uh, minus 0 0.02 uh, minus 0 0.21 core PC also minus 0 0.06 average uh, average hourly compensation for all employees and the CPI category was 0 0.03 and the core PCE category was uh, 0 0.11 or 0 0.11 um, CPI was uh, minus 0 0.06 and core PCE was uh, uh, 0 0.04. Uh, did they decide not to put the minus there or it was actually uh, it was actually positive? I'm not sure. Anyway, hourly wage or median hourly wage, as, as it says here, uh, CPS 
uh, uh, minus sign of org, uh, 0.07 and the CPI, the core PCE, uh, 0.06. Minus 0 0.1 and minus 1, 1, uh, 0, 1, 3. Now, the 1 is the CPI and 1, 3 is the PCE. Let's see. Looking more carefully at the data, one could see that, uh, that up until a certain threshold, there is a positive association between nominal wage growth and real wage growth. But beyond this point, the relationship turns negative. Okay, so they have figure one and two. Uh, show uh, scattered pl plots of real wage growth versus nominal wage growth using two different wage measures. Both figures show a clear parabolic, parabolic relationship between nominal wage growth and real wage growth as Wages rise, workers' purchasing power increases uh, up until wage growth reaches about 5% and follows thereafter. And that, actually, that does kind of show it right on the first one. Real compensation growth versus nominal compensation growth, non-farm compensation also falls. Uh, while these correlation appears robust across different... Uh, specifications we do not believe it is appropriate to inter interpret interpret it in a casual way both nominal wage growth and real wage growth reflect a variety of economic forces our suspicion about the best way to understand the document uh, documented relationship is that in environments of stable inflation increases and wages are primarily driven by increases in productivity growth, which justify higher wages or real wages, but past a certain point, it is likely that most increases in wages are driven either by adverse supply shocks or by increases in nominal aggregate demand, both of which are naturally associated with decreasing decreases in real wages. Okay, so let's see. Uh, supply shocks. Well, right now there's a supply shock because there are, you know, uh, people do walk off the job because of the vaccine mandates. So I get that part. Um, however, uh, because uh, bigger corporations that have the capability of using non-union type workers, which a lot of these places actually those workers are unionized or they're trying to be unionized. Um, Amazon has done a really good job up until recent uh, to make sure that they were not uh, unionized. Um, in fact, now uh, Amazon is trying to fight the unionization, claiming that the the organization that did the union vote uh, was bribing people with pot. I don't know if that's a, a useful uh, way of going by it, but that's what they're doing apparently. Anyway, um, but yeah, I can see that based on the fact that if big, bigger uh, companies that can afford to wait to raise their wages, one to keep those loyal and hardworking employees should do that but they also should uh think about the price of living the cost of living if you want your employees to have a cost of living that means they should get paid more in order to be able to uh, sustain themselves to be able to afford th that cost of living but corporations uh that don't see fit to do that uh to, uh, decide to cut wages and actually that goes with another thing i, I want to bring up but anyway so let's see uh da, da, da. okay blah, blah. best way to understand the document relationship is that environments of stable inflation increases in wages are primarily driven by increases in productivity growth which justify higher wages but past a certain point it is likely that most increases in wages are driven either by adverse, me, adverse 
supply shocks or by increases in nominal aggregate demand, both of which are natural association associated with decreases in real wages. It's useful to look at nominal wages over the last 25 years to understand the challenge, the challenge of taming accelerated wages, wage growth. Since the late 1990s, nominal wage growth has reduced rapidly, rapidly on two occasions, from 2001 to 2002 and from 2008 to 2009. And both times coincidence with significant recessions and increased, increases in unemployment. Yeah, you had to look at the, what happened during those same two times. 2001, we had 9-11, which really fucked up the whole economy. And then 2008, you had the financial crisis, which really fucked up the whole economy. Everybody lost their jobs. Everybody lost their freaking homes. And yeah, the, the stimulus at the time, which was actually brought upon uh, a uh, suggestion, if I remember right, by the co-author of this, Larry H. Summers, who said that because he was afraid of inflation, I think it was, uh, we shouldn't do much in deficit spending. That I think even he has uh, admitted that that was a bad idea. We should spend more. At least he said that in one interview until he was pressed to say a, a, a different way. Anyway, so let's see. Wage growth reduced by 2.4% uh, percentage points, which required unemployment to remain above 5% for four years and four months between 2008 and 2009. Wage growth reduced by 2.8% by points, percentage points, excuse me, which require unemployment to remain above 5% for seven years and 10 months. Now, see, this is where something like a job guarantee would come in. You, you, the government would come in and would uh, nab anybody who wanted a job and who was unemployed, who was recently unemployed and wanted to find and wanted to get work to maintain not only uh, the wages that they're making, but also maintain like, you know, I don't know, the, the living standard. And it would actually, it would actually uh, ease, uh, put ease on the state, on the state's unemployment rate and allow for taxes to keep being paid and not, not a lot of taxes being taken out of the state as far as the budgetary goes. And this would actually put more money in there because those people that were unemployed uh, would still be paying taxes, would still be living. And there would be, you know, very little, if any, um, unemployed, unemployed people who wanted to work, you know, that sort of thing. And that's where the job guarantee would come, would come in. So you would actually have maybe down to about two and a half percent of unemployment i would suspect if there was a uh, a job guarantee and that's just my thought i mean it's not something that i had uh ma did a mathematical equation upon but it's just a uh, a sense uh, a thought about it anyway let's see so growth reduced by 2.8 percentage points which required unemployment to remain about five percent for seven years and ten months Historic, historically, wage growth and price inflation have tracked each other uh, very closely, implying that bringing down price inflation will likely require sharp reductions in wage growth and large increases in economics, uh, economic slack. Uh, so in table two, which is below this, uh, shows the relations between nominal wage growth me are measured using the empl employment cost index uh, and price inflation over the last two decades using both the PCE and CPI. I can't remember what the heck the PCE is. It's like, per uh, like uh, personal, anyway. Uh, it's probably price, uh, price and something, anyway. I'll... I'll add that to this, I guess, at some point, probably down the, in the description below. Um, anyway, so I think it's price consum consumption index or some to that effect. Anyway, so since 2001, annual nominal wage growth has been 0.7% uh, percentage points higher on average than annual price inflation. Using the PCE with a standard de deviation of a of 0.9 percent wage growth has never been more uh, more than 2.5 percent uh, points higher than price inflation. Now, in here, 
There's in table two uh, relation between nominal wage growth and price inflation 2. 2, uh, 2001 to 2020. Full period, uh, 2001 to 2020, this is a sample period. Uh, the mean, which is 0 0.7, the standard deviation, which is at 0 0.9, highest difference, 2.5, lowest difference, minus 0 0.8. And the CPI uh, portion, it's uh, mean uh, 0 0.4, standard deviation 1.1, highest difference 2.5, and lowest difference, which is minus 1.3. Uh, in the 2001 05 uh, PCE, uh, mean at 0 0.9, standard deviation 1.2. Highest difference 2.5, lowest difference would be zero and minus 0 0.1. CPI means and all that stuff. Uh, is, uh, first category is 0 0.6, second category is 1.0, and the third category is 2.1, lowest difference uh, minus 0 0.4, and so on and so forth. I hope you get the gist of it. Um, if you want to look this up, I'll I'll actually put the uh, the article um, in the description below as well, so you can look it up. These results imply that it is highly improbable that average price inflation will fall below three percent by 2023, as predicted by the Federal Reserve, without a significant drop in wage growth from its current level of 6.5. We have shown that such declines in wage growth have historically been associated with recessions and large increases in unemployment. Overall, the historical evidence presented in this note thus suggests that we have reason to be, to be wary that higher nominal wages are always good for workers on a uh, on an economy-wide uh, basis, wage growth that runs too far ahead of productivity can contribute to underlying inflation and reverse the very gains in worker pur uh, purchasing power that we are trying to achieve. Okay, so let's see. And for what I looked up earlier, is this it? Let me see, make sure. This is from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, and this is from uh, two days ago. Uh, let's see. All employees, uh, real average hours earnings for all employees decreased 0.8% from February to March, seasonally adjusted. Uh, see, the last one, I don't, I don't know if it's, I can't remember if it says seasonally adjusted. This is actually seasonally adjusted. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics reported today this result stems from an increase of 0.4% in average hourly earnings combined with the increase of 1.2% uh, in the Consumer Price Index. That's what CPI, uh, one million, I, I remember that one. Anyway, uh, for all urban consumers, uh, real average weekly earnings decreased 1.1% over the month due to the change in real average hourly earnings combined with a decrease of 0.3% in the average work week. Real average hourly earnings decreased 2.7% seasonally adjusted from March 2021 to March of this year. The change in real average hourly earnings combined with a decrease of 0.9% in the average work week resulted in a 3.6% decrease in real average weekly earnings over this period. Production and non-supervisory employees. Real average hourly earnings for production and non-supervisory employees decreased 0.9% from February to March, uh, February to March, seasonally adjusted. This result was, stems from a 0.4% increase to, uh, to average hourly earnings combined with an increase of 1.4% 1, 1 in the consumer price index for urban wage earnings and, cl and clerical workers. Real average weekly earnings decreased 1.2% over the month due to the change in real average hour, uh, hourly earnings uh, being combined with a decrease of 0.3% average weekly hours. From March 2021 to 22, real average hourly earnings decreased 2.4% seasonally adjusted. The change in real 
average hourly earnings do combined with a decrease of 0.9% in the average work week resulted in a 3.3% decrease of real average wage earnings uh, over this period. Now, next one will be will be released uh, for, for April will be in Mar uh, May 11th. So there you go. Well, 8.30 a.m. will be interesting to see what happens there. Anyway. And that's pretty much what I've got as far as this uh, particular episode. Um, this will be going on my YouTube channel. Uh, so uh, I do uh, ones for my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash justcalvin, hashtag learn MMT. And also uh, one for my Calvin Taylor .substack .com. So um, I look forward to those. Uh, you can actually sign up for a free email uh, newsletter uh, from uh, from my Substack. It's free. Just go to calvintaylor.substack.com and just sign up for the free uh, email. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, I will, yes, I will, um, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. But I will also be uh, uh, putting those two uh, links below as this goes up. Uh, thanks and peace out for now.